Okay. Uh, I'm on. Can everyone hear me? Yay, good. Um, okay, so I'm going to be talking about uh, using React Native. I'm going to give you a quick run through of how we could make a silly little app that doesn't do very much, um, just so you can get a feel for some of the key concepts. Um, so first off, hands up, who's used JavaScript? Yay. Okay, hands up, who's used React? Okay, cool. If you've used quite a bit of React, this might be a bit of a 101 for you, but we'll see how we go. Um, so as I said, I'm going to take you through the creation of quite a simple React Native app. Um, at this point, I assume you're already sold on the concept of React Native, so I don't have to sell it to you. Um, there are a few things I won't touch on, such as uh, navigation and using more complex things like Redux, because um, there are lectures in themselves. Um, but I hope by the end of my talk, um, you'll be able to dive into the docs yourself and kind of understand some of the concepts a bit more easily um, and make your own apps. So um, I am a web developer. I am not an iOS developer, but thanks to React Native, I kind of am. Um, so feel free to ask me questions about Swift. I will not know the answer. <laughs> um, also, I am license agnostic. So as Adam said, this Facebook has done some things with their React Native license. I'm going to ignore that for the purposes of this talk. This is just a technical talk. Um, yeah, so let's jump into it. If you want to contact me at all, Hannah can code. I'm in most platforms with that. Um, feel free to tweet, tweet me. And I'm going to turn my notifications off. OK. So um, just a bit of overview of what we're going to go through today. I'll show you how to set up. Um, I'll talk to you about what components are. Um, I'll talk to you a bit about how we actually write React Native, so um, JSX and some styling. Um, I'll go through what props are. I'll talk to you about state. Um, finally, some stuff about events, actually making your app do anything. Um, and a bit about lifecycle. And I'll give you a little demo at the end if we have time, show you an actual React Native app. Um, and again, hit me up on Hanukkah and Code if you want. Um, so I'm going to consider my, success, my talk a success if by the end you know what these three things kind of are. Keep looking the wrong way. Um, so components, props, and state, they're kind of the key takeaways for this. Um, and a note on Node. So um, Node, you can use it in development. Um, it's a really handy tool to kind of get your React Native stuff going. Use tools like uh, NPM or Yarn to add extra like nice libraries and stuff to your code. Um, you can't actually use it as part of your app. So it can't actually be natively on your app yet. People are working on it, and they've got it working on Android, but iOS is uh, not happening quite yet. So quickly, if you've used React, there's a bunch of divs still. There's a bunch of p tags still. You can use all that HTML stuff. In React Native, there's no HTML, but we've got some native things that we can use, such as view and text and list view and all that kind of stuff. Um, so no HTML. It's all kind of native components. So getting set up is super easy if you're on a Mac. Yay. Um, you just need homebrew. So basically, first, brew install node, get node on your computer. And then Watchman. Um, Watchman will watch your files for any changes. And it allows you to do hot reloading. So if you go and change one of your JavaScript files, save it, boom, simulator is going to show exactly what just happened. You don't have to reload, rebuild your entire app. Um, so next, we'll use NPM or Yarn, if that's your flavor, um, to install the React Native command line interface. And this allows you to use Terminal to build your React Native things using Node. Um, finally, we've got this handy little command called, once you've got the React Native CLI installed, you can use React Native init. 
and that will build your kind of boilerplate React Native app so you don't have to do all that stuff with Xcode and it just makes it all for you. If you want an even easier option, there's now a Create React Native app, which kind of adds a bit more stuff to your React Native app if you don't want to mess around with some of the other, if you don't want to decide about config, someone's already done it for you. So you can just go and use that. Um, finally, we'll just move into our app and React Native run iOS. Uh, it's going to, the first time you do it, it's going to take a while, so don't worry. Uh, it's going to go through and it's going to compile your app and it's going to build it and spit it out in the iOS simulator. And it's going to look something like that. So yeah, we have an app. No. <laughs> okay, so if you actually open up your app in a code editor, um, you're going to see something like this. So um, we've got a bunch of stuff you can ignore, some config stuff, some Babel stuff, um, no modules, Android stuff. You can ignore all that. Um, but that's going to get your app actually working in the simulator and on the device when you come to that point. Um, dog and puppy.js are not there initially. We're going to make those. Um, so first, we're going to have a look at package.json. So if you're familiar with Node development at all, you're probably fairly familiar, to, familiar with a package.json. Um, basically, it looks like this. It's just a bunch, it's a JSON file. It's just a bunch of config stuff. It tells your um, node what you're gonna, what you depend on. So we've got some um, Babel stuff. We've got some React stuff. We've got some React Native stuff. We've also got some testing things in there and a couple of scripts that mean you can actually start building your app, sorry, um, and testing it. Um, so um, when you, uh, so the great thing about the using React Native is there's a whole community you can lean on who have already built a bunch of UI packages and logic packages that you can just go npm install blah and it'll stick it in your package.json and you can use it. Um, so there's a whole bunch of stuff you can add to that. Um, the Babel stuff is so you can use some more fancy JavaScript if you're up with ES6 and it'll compile it back to old school vanilla JavaScript. Um, so as you're gathering now, it's JavaScript and I hope after Sal's talk this morning, using JavaScript on your phone is not such a weird concept anymore. Um, so basically the entry point for our app is going to be an index.js file. So it's going to import React. It's going to import some component -y stuff from React Native. So we're using both React and React Native. Um, and it's basically just a giant class. So you don't really need to understand this, but basically we're just extending the React Native component class and we're going to stick some stuff on top. Um, everything lives in the render method or your UI is going to live in the render method. Um, and it's just going to return a bunch of stuff and then React Native is going to go off and make an app with it. Um, this you probably don't really need to know about, but at the very bottom of your index file, it's going to say app registry dot register component. And this is so Xcode knows where to go in and start doing stuff. So that's all Xcode stuff. I don't understand that. <laughs> okay. So the first thing I want you to remember from this talk, components. Uh, so everything in React and React Native is a component. The component is just a small chunk of UI, like a piece of text or an image. So here's our React Native app, um, and we have three text components. Da, da, da. But components can also be made up of other components. So the view component, it acts like a wrapper around our three text components. Uh, so it's a component made up of smaller components. Um, the way I like to think about it is components are like Lego. So the smallest chunk you can get is an individual Lego block. Um, but you can use Lego blocks 
to make a wall of Lego. You can then use that wall of Lego to make a house, or you can stick it with something else and make something completely different. So um, it's up to you what you do with your components, but you can kind of chunk them together and build cool things with these small chunks of UI. So that's the first thing, first thing to remember. Okay, so inside our render method, we, don't, we do write JavaScript, but we also write something called JSX. JSX looks a bit like this, which looks very similar to HTML. Um, so it's an XML kind of markup language that allows us to use this kind of language within JavaScript. So this is the view component we saw on the simulator. This is what it looks like. Um, we pop some text components inside it. Very similar to HTML, that, HTML from the 90s that you're used to. Um, if we want to use JavaScript inside our JSX, we escape it with the curly braces, and we're good to go for JavaScript. So here, we're accessing a Java object called styles and passing it into the styles parameter of our component. So outside of the curly braces, JSX, inside JavaScript. So there's a big debate about whether you should use JavaScript and styles, how you should combine them, how, how they should interact. Well, in React Native, you have no choice. Uh, your styles are JavaScript. So they are like CSS, but they are JavaScript. They're not CSS. So we're going to create um, a constant called styles, and we're going to create a new style sheet within that. Style sheet is something that you can import from React Native. So it looks very similar to CSS, but it's JavaScript. So basically, we're going to make a container class and we're going to add some flex things in it. We're going to justify our content. Um, there's a big long list you can find on the docs that'll tell you all the like CSS properties that you can use and how they would look in um, React Native. Basically, it's identical except it's camel case. Um, so you know you can make your your style constant, and then uh, you can take chunks of this object, and you can feed it down into your components. Say, uh, view, I want you to use the container styles. So, I've said previously, we could uh, um, use components and make up other components with them. So basically, you can roll your own components. Now, um, I like docs, so I figure we should make an app about dogs. I don't have a dog, so. Um, imagine that we're going to frequently tell people the name of our dog, Fido. So we're going to make a component. We're going to call it dog.js. Um, and we're going to put that basic boilerplate class stuff in there. Um, so the first thing to note, class dog. Capital letter. I don't really know why. I think it's so React Native knows it's a component. Just make a capital letter. Ooh, that's fun. <laughs> um, so, yeah, name your um, file, capital letter, class, capital letter. Um, and we're just going to pop a text component in there. Yay, we've made our first component. So now we can use that anywhere. Here's what it looks like in the simulator. We can import dog.js into our parent component and call it using JSX. So now when we call dog, it's going to spit out my dog's name is Fido with a text component. Um, we can call it as many times as we like. What a useful component we've made. Okay, so it's not the most useful component, but um, maybe we could add some data to it. Maybe our dog's names change occasionally. Um, so we can pass down a string, the name of our dog, into our dog component. 
So each time the dog component is loaded, grabs the string and it changes something about itself. So this is the second thing I need you to remember, props. So here I'm going to pass down a prop, dog name, with a string. Fido, Terence, I don't know what you want to call your dog. Um, you can pass down whatever you like. Um, strings, numbers, functions, variables, whatever. Um, this is kind of the JavaScripty stuff. Um, so, React Native isn't magical. It doesn't know that that's a dog name yet. So it's still going to show my dog's name is Fido, my dog's name is Fido. Um, we can access that dog name prop that I'm sending down into the component from the component itself. So, we want it to do that. It's not going to do that yet. So here's our component again. But this time, instead of just putting my dog's name is Fido, we're going to escape our JSX and we're going to put my dog's name is this dot props dot dog name. Now the this, I'm not going to go into that. There's a lecture in itself, but basically it means we're here. So this is here. Um, this dot props is the props object that we've just sent down from above. And this dot props dot dog name is the dog name chunk of that. So where we've written dog name equals Fido, that's this. So now we can grab it, we can make like, it's kind of like templating, I suppose. And that's going to spit out whatever we, whatever we throw down to it. So again, our curly braces, because we're doing JavaScript. So, so far our component doesn't actually do anything other than display some data that we pass down to it. So this is called a presentational component. So in this case, we don't actually need to write it as a class because we don't need to access any of the other features that a component class gives to us. Um, so we can rewrite it as a function, make it a bit easier. Boom, done. That's all you need. That's the entire thing. Export default, still capital letter dog. We're going to send it down some props. Now we're actually including the props as an argument. So we don't need the this. And this is some uh, fancy ES6 syntax. So if you're not up with ES6, this is how you write a function in ES6. So instead of going func blah equals, it's just some shorthand. OK, so that was props. Concept three that I want you to take away is state. So maybe we need to keep track of some information as our app is changing. Um, so we can uh, use state to kind of manage that information for us. So we go back to having our class. Um, we do some fancy constructing stuff. It's all in the docs. You don't need to remember this. Um, but the important bit is the this.state equals, and then you have an object. So this.state is basically an object where you can stick in stuff and it will remember it across your component. Now your state is only in your component. Your entire app doesn't know about it. Your entire app doesn't need to know about it. Um, but your component will keep track of what's happening in this dot state. If you're going to do some complex stuff, then you can look into other tools like, I'm sure you've heard of Redux and Flux and MobX. They're all very complicated and difficult. You may not need them. I'm not going to talk about them here. So. State is an object, it lives within the component. Now, from our previous slide, well, let me get it back. We've got this dot state puppy name equals spot. Okay? The component now knows itself that the puppy's name is spot. So now, when we create dog name, this dot state equals puppy name. Sorry, dog name equals this dot state dot puppy name. So instead of capturing it in a variable, you're capturing it in state instead. It's exactly the same as previously. 
So that's state. Um, events, you actually might want to make your app do something. Um, let's add a button. Yay. Um, so again, we just import button from React Native. It's already got a button component there. We don't need to do anything to it. We can style it if we want, but it works as a button. We're going to give it a title, change name. And uh, we're going to add an on press prop to our button. So when we click on it, it's going to go on press. I'm going to do this. So again, curly braces, we add a function into our on press. Um, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to call this.setState and then we're going to add an object. So this is going to make this dot set 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 state remake our state and change puppy name from spot to ginger so that's what our button is going to do so a few things to note about set state is it's asynchronous um, and it should only be changed using set state and set state kind of tells react that the state has changed and it's going to go and reload that component for you so it's kind of it'll look like it just changed magically so here's our app, this.state, puppy name is spot. We're going to press our button, this.setState is going to change it to ginger, and I'm going to do a magical press, boom, and now our state is ginger. So there we go. So um, that was my three things you should remember. From now on, you can kind of, you know, take it or leave it if you like. Um, but React Native components, when they're being built, they run through a life cycle. So from creation to making the component, to mounting it, to being in the state of being mounted, to unmounting. Um, during these life cycle stages, you can kind of hook into these stages and go, okay, when you're in this stage, do this thing. Um, this is what that kind of looks like. They're just methods within your class and you can stick stuff in there that you want to happen so it does it automatically for you. So things like fetch this API so you can go and grab some data or um, set up my state or with component will unmount, that means your component's going away. You might want to stop a timer or do some cleanup. So you can kind of if you've got functions you want to occur at a specific time, you can stick these in those lifecycle hooks. Now, JavaScript is fun. You're going to see this. This is the red screen of death. <laughs> um, if you need to go in, find this little bugger. It's going to be somewhere in your code, or it's not going to be somewhere in your code. Um, you can debug in your browser. So you can go in and React Native has this handy little thing where it hooks into your browser and it'll run a debugger in your browser. So if you need to do some console logging in your browser, just open up DevTools and you can use the uh, console how you would doing any web development. So components, props, State. That's all you need to remember, and I think from this, you can go in and dive into the docs, and understanding those three concepts will make it much easier for you to start developing in React Native. 